Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Again, we are continuing on the journey with food and Hashimoto's thyroiditis or hypothyroid. Basically, we're looking at lectins today. So what kind of foods contain lectins? So lectins are a protein. So let's take a look. So if we have lectin foods, we have legumes, we have beans, chickpeas, lentils, peas, soybeans right? Nuts and seeds, almonds, cashews, sunflower, sesame seeds. With the grain family, we're looking at wheat, rice, buckwheat, quinoa, millet. Fruit, melon, vegetables, tomato, potato, eggplant, and corn. So if you look down this list, you look go, hmm, some of these foods are probably good for me. But there are some patients who are genetically susceptible or have issues with lectins and creating problems. So when we have these types of foods that they're eating in their diet and it's creating flares of their Hashimoto's thyroiditis, we have to start looking and digging deeper into what the cause might be. So let's just kind of explain how uh, the inflammatory processes can occur related to lectins, okay? So we look at the immune reactive properties of lectin, right? So what happens is lectin is a protein and a glutination of proteins forming neoantigens. So what does that mean? So lectin is a protein that attracts carbohydrates or basically sugar. And when it agglutinates, it creates a neoantigen, a new type of protein, a new antigen that can be attacked. And then on the flip side here, we have binding to lectin-like receptors. So the people who are susceptible, the genotypes that are susceptible, some of the neoantigens will cross-react with tissue protein. Tissue protein like your thyroid, like your ovaries, like your adrenal glands, right? So it has been shown in the research that it affects thyroid in a significant portion. So cross-reaction with tissue protein, which increases autoimmune response or antibody response as a result. So a food can create increased autoimmune responses, right? On the flip side, because of the susceptibility, you have activation of Th17, which is an inflammatory process, right? Increases autoimmunity due to the inflammatory response. So we look at this cascade of eating all these good foods, quote unquote, good foods, but we don't realize that it can actually create autoimmune antibodies and it can create inflammatory responses. Therefore, you truly never heal. So let me give you an example. When someone has a, a problem with wheat, but they go to their doctor and they check and they just check for gliadin, right? And they go, oh no, you don't have any problems with wheat. People don't realize that wheat has many components to it. One part is called wheat germ gluten, right? That portion, portion is basically like lectins, right? If you have a problem with that section of it, then we would run additional tests to look at this and look at the different types of foods that might have lectins. Because the people who react to wheat germ gluten can react to these types of foods. So in our office, what we do is we run a test called Cyrix Array 10, and it looks at these cross-reactive foods. And is it a problem for patients who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? So it's important to understand that lectins, uh, for some, uh, a good portion of patients with Hashimoto's may never react to it, but there are certain percentages that do react to it, and you need to get to the bottom or the root cause of what their issues are with food. So running a proper test may help determine whether that patient can have tomato, potatoes, quinoa, millet, gluten-free grains, right? Uh, and nuts and seeds, which are tend to be good for you. But people who have reactions or genetic susceptibility, they will have problems with lectins, even with good foods, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. We'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side.